So, hello. I'm just doing a batch of pots for uh, the publishing house Condé Nast. The, for the last few years they've had me do some pots for Christmas presents for editors. And this is just the simple, uh, simplest of uh, English flower pots called the full pot, which I've done a video on before, but this is, we're in my shop in Woodville, which is the shop that I moved into in 1970. And I put the camera as close to the angle as, I, as I'm seeing, as I could, which I think is more useful for you guys. You push in at the bottom so you have a place to pick up some material. You can hear that my shop is right next to Route 202 here in Connecticut. I love making flower pots. Well, I love throwing, period, but the thing that's so great about making flower pots is it gives you an excuse to pull up a liquid line after liquid line after liquid line. And I'm afraid the Potters that love throwing are really addicted to it. People that don't understand that will say, how can you make the same pot over and over again? And you're really not making the same pot over and over again. You're, it's, it's like going and doing the waltz. You know, one, two, three, one, two, three. Well, if you thought about that in a very analytic way, you'd say, God, you're doing the same step over and over again. But it's the getting in the swing of the thing that really makes it glorious and fun. I'm just going to make a batch of these. Um, this is the stamp for the publishing house. With these pots I'll put my, my name on the bottom. They need 150 of these for the editors of the magazine. I don't know how many, it must be eight years we've been doing this. It's been a long time. But it's a, it's a really nice order to do. Hand wants to be dry when you pick this thing up. So here again are those wonderful um, I call them a Portuguese lifter because I first saw them in Porto, in Portugal. Looking at these um, films as they go out on YouTube, the thing that's so cool is they you do a video and somebody looks at it in Portugal. <laughs> I can't thank the old potters that I've worked with over the years uh, enough to all that wonderful uh, traditional information. You know, in the 60s, nobody really wanted to hear it. So when you walked into a shop in Devon or in uh, North Devon or in Yorkshire or Cumbria, those guys were all, uh, they had these wonderful gems to tell people. So one of the main things they always said was, let the wheel do the work. So, this is a heel lift that I use a lot. And I was showing off, so I just ripped the clay a little bit there. Let's see. I'm going to just pick up some clay and fold it over that. I just made this clay in the clay mixer about five minutes ago, so it's a pretty uh, unhappy bit of material. See, this just came off of my hand. I'm going to save that, and as I stretch the clay, I may have to use it. Right there. 
being gentle at that spot. Now, if I was at a high school, people would be saying, now, this pot, what are you keeping that for? It's all, well, the thing about traditional pottery is that you know where the pot's starting, you know where it's going to end, and there's a lot of ways to get between those two places. So, even though this pot's had a little rip in it, it's going to come out just fine. You can see where that rip used to be. Okay, so the old English potters used to work 50 pounds of clay with a cast, and each uh, journeyman had to be able to throw 20 casts a day, so that's half a ton. So you can imagine how fast these guys were working. And the thing that makes the pots look so wonderful is that the backbone of what they're doing, uh, uh, you know, the memory of exactly what's going on in the pot. Uh, I get that. See, this pot has a lot of oopses. By the time I get to pot number 28 of the day, I'll be getting this stamp on correctly. But, you know, they're paying a lot of money for these, so you want, you want the little Condé Nest thing to really be on the right angle. And the, st the stamp itself is, when I cut it out, I cut it out a little bit on an angle, so I'm, I'm compensating with it. Okay. Anyway. With a pot this small, it's sort of silly to use these supports, but I'm, I love them so much and it keeps the pot so undisturbed that I really, I really appreciate them. So here are some of the pots that I've just made. This is my old shop. I put them on boards all the way along here. When this is a, a full day, this will just be filled with pots all the way over. And here is my pug and here is the clay that's just come out of the pug so these balls I'm gonna uh, these chunks of clay I'm gonna take over and wedge them so that they look like that and then here's the some pots that I just made and here's my wheel that you guys have just been seeing from another site. And just for the fun of it, I'll turn this on. Whee! So you don't put your hand in there. <laughs> I just love the Bluebird system. So and from that, you come over to this one. And of course, I'm trying to keep my hands clean, but you would be throwing material in there and then chopping it down and then you can see it coming out on this side. And that's how I prepare for what I've uh, just been showing you. I have a batch of six pound pieces of clay that I've just put through the pug. So what I do at this point is just wedge them a little bit. Put that one on the wheel. 